Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Well, I was told by uh, Brandon, who was involved in the LIRR route that I've already shown you, that uh, I was telling him that I usually look for good scenarios, and I find complaints about a lot of scenarios, and especially the older DLC. You seen, saw that recently on a couple of scenarios, I believe, with the 66. But I mentioned at one point that I, I'm always looking for good scenarios in routes, and I prefer to see good scenarios that are properly tested. Uh, and he... He understands this. This is something he knows very well. Uh, he told me to check out Washington, Baltimore, because he made those scenarios, and uh, as a result, uh, he could. He says that they're good scenarios, so I'm going to put him to the test on that. Today we're doing Washington, Baltimore. We're going to be doing that for the next two weeks here. I don't know how I'm going to fit the rail fans in yet. I do want to do the rail fans as well. They're going to be a separate video, whether they're in these two weeks or at a later time. Uh, and I'm also planning to be away from home at the time that these are actually being released. So. Um, I'm not, I haven't figured out yet if I'm going to put another uh, item in before these, which uh, if, it, if I have, you've already seen it. But if I don't, you're going to be seeing this a couple days after I record it. So I'm recording these in advance, and there's something else I want to show you. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to record it yet, uh, or if I'm going to have everything for it yet. So I'm going to try and get that sorted out. And if, again, if I do it, you're already going to see it, and then these videos are going to come out the entire time I'm gone. But if I don't get that worked out, then I'm going to have to record something else for the, my trip because... Uh, Needless to say, there's going to be a lot of uh, scenarios I'm going to have to get up while I'm away. So uh, this is going to be happening again in October as well. So needless to say, I'm trying to get my channel back in a position where I'm ahead on things. I'm way behind. In any case, let's go ahead and get the uh, Washington to Baltimore route started here. This route goes from, well, Washington to Baltimore. And I'll talk more about the route itself as we get going uh, because I'll be able to show you the map while we're in the scenario. You can see there are two trains in these scenarios, the Amtrak Acela Express and the A... CS64. There's also an MP36 that comes with the route. Um, MP sorry, MP36PH, I should say. And there's also a multi-level cab car, which is related to the MP36PH as well. They're not using the scenarios, so we're going to go ahead and play the scenarios that we have. Uh, if it shows up in the scenario later, we'll look at it, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be a good train drive yet. We'll figure that out later. Or if the scenario will be a good scenario. So we'll figure that out later if we find something for it. Uh, and uh, there could be something the workshop may want to play with this in the future as well. So we'll find that out in the future. But for right now, Amtrak to sell out Washington to Baltimore. We're going to be near the nation. We're going to be in the nation's capital, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be actually not very far from the um, where the U.S. capital is. I'll show you that when we get in the map. Let's get ourselves going. I'll get start with the train tour as usual. I want to show you the Am the Acela Express also so I can learn how to drive it. Let's get started. So here we are inside the Amtrak Acela Express. The first thing we would want to do when we start the train, and let's zoom up here, we would turn on our headlights, which you saw just came on and off. So I'm going to have to hold shift to go backwards there. We got it set there. So before we actually get moving, you can see the instrument light's already on. There is a dimmer on it. Now the manual is not clear. The I key is also listed as the pantograph selector, uh, as well as being a dimmer. One of those has to be wrong. I'm not going to experiment with the instrument lights on this, whether they change. It seems they're already on, so I don't care. We're going to leave that be. But uh, what I will do is I'll turn on the cab light. There we go. We're going to take a nice look around the train here. So it looks like this has an automatic signaling system on, an in-cab signaling system, which the Amtrak Acela does have that. So uh, that is something we are going to get to see on the signals. We're going to have to learn these signals as we go along as well. So I'm going to have to bring up a signals page to uh, work from for this. Now let's start on this side while I'm over here because since I already have this highlighted. Let's look at some of the different things over here. The train brake is over here on this side, which is this little uh, lever right down here in the middle of the screen right now. That's the train brake. So next to that, we have an acknowledge thing here. So that is clearly the alerter for the Q button. We'll press that. Next to that, we have the uh, engine start stop. So that starts the engine or stops the engine as applicable. It just does the opposite of whatever you have going on at the moment. The headlight switch is right there. So if, again, you, if you can see that I move that headlight switch to an on and off position. There you go. That's how that works. And apparently it sits in the middle for on, which I don't understand why that is the case. That's really strange. But in any case, the ground lights can also be turned on and off, so that can also flip around as needed. And uh, I don't know the shortcut for that offhand. It's probably on another page here. Oh yeah, ground lights are under the F key. So F will turn the ground lights on and off, just like that. You can stop it in the middle as well. So ground lights, will, well, you might want to know what the ground lights are. We'll take a look at that later, if I remember. Uh, back to the uh, rest of the controls here. Above this, we have the destination display. So you can turn the destination display on and off, and then you're able to use um, 
other keys to set the destinations. F7 and F8 are the keys you use to set the destinations. So that's the same as in uh, Long Island Railroad. If you uh, hit F7, F8 right now, you can see that it moves the switch around. Now it doesn't bring up a box, which I like. I don't really want to see the box on here like in Long Island Railroad, but uh, it does show the, um, as you push those switches, it does change destination. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure ours is set for Baltimore and show you that working. Uh, when we get going as well, if, yeah, if I remember. Uh, still a lot of controls here, so I'll try not to blab too much here. Let's keep going. We have the bell, which is that. Uh, we are going to have a front hatch. I don't know what the front, oops, I don't know what the front hatch actually does, but it does something. So there's a front hatch here and the button actually works for it. The wipers are above that, so they obviously turn on just like that. Perfect. And they do have a... Oh, it's just a straight on off. There's no intermittent setting like on the Long Island Railroad. Okay, good to know. And I think I got everything on this side except for the horn, which is the most important part. So let's move to the other side of the train now. Over on this side, you can see the emergency brake, that big red button there already. That is already very, very evident. Uh, there are some more things next to that. We have the tilt isolates. So that's... Um, this is a tilting train, I guess, is the best way to put it. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what Tilt Isolate does, but I'm going to assume we don't need it on this route. So uh, I'll let you know if we use it what it does. I've never actually seen it before. There is a reset here, and this is something you can push. It resets the throttle and cruise control. There's also a dimmer up here, which that, there's your instrument lights. That's the uh, instrument lights right there, the screen light. So there you go. You just see that changing. I'll do it again. Yeah, just does that. So the, uh, and then there are these screen one and screen two buttons. These turn screens on and off. I'll just do it with screen one to show you. And then it comes back on when you flick it back on. I think it takes a little time to turn back on. So you do kind of want to have those screens on because they are also your uh, train controls. I'll zoom back out to show you screen two. It just gets rid of the Amtrak thing. So basically when you're coming into a train, starting up the train, these will be off and you would turn these to turn the screens on and then they would basically do their procedure and they're on. They don't really have much of a procedure because it's simulated in this game simply. Uh, obviously below the uh, controls I just showed you, we have the, norm, the big stuff here. So the power handle is there. Uh, I'm going to make sure my brakes are applied here. How, are, how do the brakes work on this train? I don't know. Uh, well, I just set them, so there you go. Brakes are on. We're in emergency, so I'm not going anywhere. Uh, so this is the power control. It looks like it's just, a, oh, it actually is a very, very smooth up and down. So it actually goes in a very, very... Um, smooth setting so it's so it seems like it has a little notch to clear but then after that is oh maybe it is three okay it looks like a four setting uh, power handle there we obviously have a reverser here and it goes in both directions and we also have uh, what is this last one I have to remember now this last one is oh no the one over here on in the middle of those two is actually hello another train just went by that scared the living daylights out of me uh, in any case, that is the cruise control. So this actually sets your uh, cruise control meter on. I'll show you this again. It actually sets your cruise control meter as high as 160 uh, miles per hour, which we don't want to go that fast. Let's assume that we're going no faster than 80. You would just plop the uh, switch right here in the middle, and it would, and you could then set the train into a cruise control setting where you can't go any faster than 80. And uh, you just set it and go, and you're done. And then if you want to stop using cruise control, you just bring the uh, you just bring that back down there and you're done. So cruise control turns on. So that's a neat little feature there. I'll see if I can use that at some point to show that off. Uh, obviously the train status screens, you know what those are. And the loud, there's eight more things I wanna point out here. Six of them are right here. Pantograph selector. Uh, there's showing that it's connected or disconnected. Hmm. Oh, front, both, or rear. So you can put one or two pantographs up or neither if you want to be, you won't go anywhere. Uh, there's a timer. I don't know what that does. That's not functioning anything. It doesn't function. There's the main cruise control. Here's the handbrake. And this is the uh, sander. So if, if you want to get some traction when you get started moving. And here's your auto brakes, which I'm not sure what the auto brakes do, but we'll find out. Oh, auto dynamic brakes. So dynamic brakes are automatically in play if you turn that on and they work as, so you have a different brake setup when that's on apparently, something like that. And two more things up here. We have another uh, red button. This is another emergency brake. So we got two emergency brakes here as you can see. I guess that's a secondhand man's emergency brake. And I think he also has his own horn. Yeah, he also has his own horn as you can see. 
Apparently I just disabled the cab signaling system. That was not what I intended to do, but apparently I did that. Good to know. I pushed a button to disable cab signaling and I had no idea I was doing that. Okay, well, his horn doesn't work apparently. There it is. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, finish the tour and let's get started. Good morning, engineer. Today you'll be operating a Sella Express number 2158 en route to Baltimore Penn Station. You're scheduled to depart Washington at 0900, so ensure the train is ready to leave at that time. However, do not depart until instructed by the conductor. K Tower Dispatcher has not issued any temporary speed restrictions, so your departure from Washington should be fairly routine. Open the doors to five miles boarding. Okay. So I looked up the area around Union Station earlier because I was curious, being in Washington, uh, where the trains went around there being such a small area. Uh, this is the area that goes down towards L'Enfant. Uh, and there's another track that separates uh, somewhere over here. This is really where the main line is. So this is like a little spur to Union. And there's a lot of tracks that actually end here, but uh, you can see those tracks are up here. We're on one of them. But there are a few tracks that go down here and continue along past this area, which is, any guesses? The U.S. Capitol is in this area. What, you don't believe me? Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, go outside and we'll take a quick look outside. And there's the road that we are underneath. Nice little highway there, and if we head over the distance, you can actually see right there in the distance the top of the U.S. Capitol. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the uh, downside about this U.S. Capitol is that you are not going to see Chuck Schumer or Mitch, uh, or, you know, good old Mitch hanging around outside. It's going to be a quiet little area here, and there's really nothing beyond it because they didn't want to model too far away from the track for performance purposes. But this is their attempt at creating the U.S. Capitol. There is the front promenade right there. So yeah, the U.S. Capitol is in here, and then we're going to head back toward uh, and two of the other buildings in the complex are here as well, obviously. Uh, heading, and then we're going to head back towards the Capitol. I've lost where the Capitol is now, because I'm bad with direction. You know what? Oh, there it is. There's the Capitol. So two of the other buildings in the complex are here as well. And then we have the train station over here, which is where we're going to be going. So that's where we are. Let's get the uh, wrong HUD. Let's get that head on, let's turn the headlights on. We're going to move the reverser up so we are ready to go as directed. We're gonna get the brakes down to a 20%, as low brakes as possible, because we are about to get going. We're going to go when the signals allow us to. Normally this is the time I would take to look at the train, but we are close to departure time, because we were told nine o'clock. There it is, right at nine o'clock, right on time. Conductor, a cell at number 2158, ready to depart Washington. Proceed on signal indication. Roger. I'm going to assume signal indication is clear. If we take a quick peek forward here, I don't... Yeah, we have a green. We're clear. We're definitely clear to go. So we're going to get ourselves up. That's a little too quickly. This is a uh, fairly smoothish uh, throttle here. Even though it's notched and you only get like six different levels you go up in those notches very very quick you just push this right up to 100 percent if you're not careful but when you're in a 15 mile per hour section you do not want to ideally do that now this is my first drive along the route so i will definitely miss a lot of things along here don't expect me to be an expert of this route uh, in fact, even the Wikipedia, I didn't even find a Wikipedia page that seemed to be very clear on uh, the details of this route, which is unfortunate because the UK routes, they are all very, very detailed on their Wikipedia pages. This one is clearly not. Bit of a shame. Make sure we do not speed, preferably. That would be ideal. Yeah, we're going to be uh, punching this. We're getting, we're getting into a 20 right now, which is good news. We're going to be going very, very soon at a much faster speed. You know, 5 miles per hour faster, which is a little more ideal than where we are right now, to say the very least. There's a 45 right after that, and things just get faster from there. So we can now go a little bit faster. Now I'm just going to take it easy here. Now, Noma Galadet is somewhere in this area that we uh, take before turning off onto our main journey. And there's another station for uh, Rhode Island Street or something like that. Rhode Island Ave, Brentwood is uh, on the junction that leaves us. I'm going to get up to speed a little quicker now. 
And the route that does leave us uh, goes to a number of other stations heading, I think, to the west along. You'll have kind of northwest, heads to Silver Spring and a bunch of other stations beyond that, I'm pretty sure. So the route leaving us does go towards Silver Spring, and I have no idea where beyond that. And we're going to start speeding up now. We're up to our 45 mile per hour speed limit. You see the 95 mile per hour coming up. CP Avenue Track 2, that's a train in a shed over there, it looks like. We're going to be joining something considered to be a high speed line coming up here as we get on to, as we continue to the east. We're going to eventually rejoin the main line and it will become a high speed load speed. Yet. Now we can start going. Oh, I almost pushed it too quickly. Anyway, we're up to a level five throttle now, which is fine for my purpose. You can see our in-cap signal is showing double green. We are good to go here. All the way up to 95. Once you pass 80, you must rely on the in-cap signaling. We're gonna rejoin the uh, main line right after Chevrolet. Chevrolet is the station on the way. Uh, CETC1 train dispatcher to a cell at number 2158. Over. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there's a work crew between Landover and Carroll at milepost 128. Sound horn when approaching, starting at south limits Landover. Over. Okay, Roger, over and out. I'm just going to be more casual because I, I like to do my own conversation. Oh, yeah, whatever, we'll do that. I don't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a left turn when we pass the uh, station coming up. Cab signaling system, ATC disabled, ACSES disabled. That, okay. That could be bad. <laughs> I do not know. That could be bad. Because we're working on operative 125 limit now, I'm just going to go ahead and crank this up. But we're not going to go all the way up to the 125 because uh, now that I know if decibels on my board, I'm a little nervous about knowing where the throttle is gaining speed or not. So I'm going to bring it back down to 50 for right now. We do have an uphill coming up, which is going to be very, very useful for me. And that's still gaining a fair amount of speed. So back to 16. I think I'm still gaining speed. I might use that on this uphill coming up. There's a train going by. It looks like one of those MP36 cab cars. I'm not really getting speed right now, which is okay. I've not seen the station yet. I'm getting a little concerned. Again, first time here. Oh, 110 coming up, so we're going to get our drop in speed very soon. Let's put a small brake application on just to bring the speed down in time. That's what I'm concerned about. We have, actually, we have a 100 right after that 110, so we're going to be dropping significantly at this point. You can see there is a stop button above us and a start button. They're not programmed to do anything. Put another slight brake on here. Add that brake. Make sure we're down to the 100 in time. That is down to the 100 in time. In fact, I can now start increasing again a little bit. There we go. That's what I want to see. So here's South Limits Landover. I think I have to blow the horn now. into a 110 again so I have a feeling we must have gone by the work crew at this point and I'm not seeing stations at all I, I mean I have max scenery density on but I'm a little confused as to where the stations are on this uh, journey like quick peek at where we are 
you see, oh, it's, it's over here on this side. Okay, that's why I didn't see it. And then the first station coming up is the one the one we're going to see is coming up. That's the one that we actually would service on this line. So we're going to see that one in a second. And I didn't check what it was. I assume it's New Carrollton. Let's find out. Yeah, it is New Carrollton. I'm absolutely right. So I know where I am. This is New Carrollton. So there is another line over there, the Metro line services some other stations that we don't see, but they are marked on the map in the manual. You just aren't gonna be doing anything at them because they're Metro. So you can disregard them. Now, I don't know if the MP36 actually services the Metro line. Maybe the Metro line is uh, drivable on this uh, route. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure of that. It does have its own yard. It seems to actually end at New Carrollton. So that's actually a transfer point for the Metro to our train. Uh, the Metro actually takes a bit of a loop over there and it actually ends. If you go back to where it was, you can see the loop right there and that's the Metro yard right there, the new Carrollton yard. So now it's just this train going in this direction. We did cross the I-95, I believe, as well as we left new Carrollton. Next station we're gonna pass by is gonna be Seabrook. We are currently slated to be literally right on time for our stop, maybe a few seconds early. And we're actually, oh no, we're not getting, oh, we are getting time. Okay, we're getting a little bit of time as long as we stay at the high speed limits. So that will help us in case we have any problems. Not much, because you have to be at a very high speed, but we won't talk about that. We are on level ground right now, so there's no grading at this time. There is an uphill grading coming up. We're going to have to counteract it downhill right after that. So things like that are going to influence our speed. This is why I'm not hanging around right at the speed limit. Hopefully we can gain enough time at high enough speeds here to make sure that we have no problem being on time. I want to keep the train at 123 if I can. So if I dip up to 124, even though I have a two-mile buffer above that, well, one and a half, we'll call it. Uh, I still want to make sure I stay at 123 because we are gaining time at 123 out of 125. And it also means if there's any uphill that gets us on a zero throttle, we have time to tick to 125 and get our train back where we need to be. So when I hit 124, I idle the throttle like back to 123. I turn the throttle back on, uh, on a level one throttle. And then if I start losing speed, even at that, then I have to increase more throttle to maintain the speed. So I didn't even do it that time when I got back to 123 because I'm on a downhill gradient. That downhill gradient is now ended. We're back on level ground. At some point we should have Seabrook coming up. I don't think we've seen it yet. Oh, train. You can pause on YouTube if you want to know who that was. I didn't got it up very, very late. And because I'm going really, really fast, I have to pay attention to what's happening in front of me. I don't want to go back to the map and check it in case I miss a signal or something. And I don't have time to stop. So I'm not going to do a map checking for something like that. There's a crossover track. I'm still hanging out at 123, which is fantastic. 122, I'll hold her. Oh, we got a downhill coming. I'm going to hold at 122. I actually don't want to increase any speed right now because this... Uh, is a 1.0% downhill grading coming up. I'm going to actually zero the throttle and see what that does. I may need to put some brakes on here. This, I believe, is Seabrook. Yeah, we're going to put a brake on. And this should be sufficient for right now. Still heading to BWI Airport Track. The next station that we're going to see coming up, I believe, uh, is going to be Bowie State. Bowie State. And then Odenton. I'll check at Odenton and make sure that I actually am still where I think I am as well. Oh, 
well, I'm losing a lot of speed now. Let's put a little bit of throttle back on to gain speed. So a little extra throttle here. We're on a 1.1% uphill gradient, so extra throttle is needed. That throttle is now going to be reduced as we are, well, actually, I'm going to leave it at level 2 for right now. As the uphill just ended, we have a downhill coming up. I'm still okay at level 2 for the time being on this segment. But this is why I like to operate a few miles under the limit where I can, because that way if I have the opportunity to increase speed and then bring it back off if I don't need it anymore. And if I do get close to the limit, even with idle throttle, I have time to turn around rather than riding 125 the whole way and speeding every time. We're on a 0 0.7 downhill gradient, that percentage. Now smoothing out, we're back to 123, level one throttle going back on. We have an uphill starting, 0.2% uphill gradient. Moving to a 0.9%. So I'm going to put a level 2 throttle to see what happens. Ooh, I actually just lost a little speed, but didn't want to. Tried to go back up and went back down. Now, Odenton is the last station before the BWI airport track, so I'm going to actually check what I think is Bowie State and make sure that, oh, we have a change in our signal coming up. Again, I don't know what this means yet, but it's a flashing, so I'm going to assume I need to drop the speed. Yeah, we have a 90 coming up, or an 80 coming up, so it might be warning me about the speed change. So I'm pulling that speed down right now. This should be Bowie State. A little more break here. We still have the flashing greens. Quick look at the map to make sure that was Bowie State. And that was actually Odenton. So I missed a station somewhere. I don't know which one I missed. I'm going to save here just in case I have a problem that I don't know about. So if you see a sudden cut, you know why. The cab signaling system has once again been disabled, probably because I crossed over 80. So I guess it re-enables itself and then turns itself back off when you cross 80. That seems to be what happens. Yeah, this is what it was giving me the flashing greens for, I believe, because now it's uh, crossing me over to the end track. So now I'm back in a 110. I'm back on a static green. So uh, we can start increasing speed again. Now our stop is six miles away from this uh, junction. So we're going to go ahead and get ourselves back up to speed for uh, driving purposes. We did gain about 20 seconds on our stop at one point there. We're starting to lose a little of that time now. So assuming we can get up to the 110, the better. But we're going to have to get ready to make our stop very, very shortly because we're getting close to two miles a minute territory here. We have to make sure, hello, we have to make sure that we don't uh, blow past our stop, obviously. So we're going to try to break in time for our stop. We probably have a low speed limit entering the station as well. BMI, BWI airport track. I said BMI, it's BWI airport track. Baltimore Penn Station is not long after uh, the BWI airport track. There are other state. There's another station along the way, but Baltimore Penn is somewhere along the uh, path there, and that's the terminus of our route when we get there. Martin State Airport is beyond Baltimore Penn. So not a lot of stations on our uh, route. It looks like this just look, just looks like a very simple run. A little sad there's not more stations here, but. So I'm gonna assume that flat, the flashing greens means you're slowing down your speed for a junction. It probably is a junction change signal. Just like you have in the UK, you're flashing double yellow and you're flashing single yellow to give you advance warnings. 
Uh, here it's just a single flashing double green, your flashing clear signal. Slow down, but keep going. Do not stop. We have gained about 10 seconds again, so I'm happy about that. I don't think we're going to have a problem being on time for the stop. I'm just kind of hanging around at 105 right now because I don't think we're going to have too many problems at this point. Plus, there's a 90 coming up, so I don't mind being a little slower. Normally, I would know that, but um, again, my first time here, so I'm just going to act like I knew that the 90 was coming up. We're gaining at 106 now, so yeah, definitely a good thing we were going a little slower there. There is a BWI airport, so since the 90 is not long before the platform, I'm going to actually put a heavier brake application on now so we can prepare our stop. You can actually see the double green on the signal over our head there as well, over our train. So I'm going to hold here at 80 for a moment. We are gaining speed here, and you know what? This is a good time to put the brakes on for good. So brakes are on for good. Nah, back to a level one brake for now. Oh, that's doing nothing. That level one brake is doing nothing. Back to a level two. We're now about uh, 20 over our uh, decimal distance there, so... Uh, Bring it down just a little more as we start coming to a stop here. But I want to make sure I get fully into the track as well. I'm taking the uh, brakes off because I'm down to about 40. That's a good speed for entry. I'm going to bring it down a little more as I actually enter. So now we're going to put that extra drop speed on, or speed drop. Down to about 30 now. And here we are at the BWI Airport Track number one, you can see track number two over on the left side. And now we're going to do a proper slowdown for stopping at the station. Now, trains probably come in reality in a lot faster, uh, just like on the LIRR. But um, because I'm still learning how this Acela drives, and we're going to, we are going to see it on another route as well. It's a standalone DLC with scenarios elsewhere. So we're going to see it elsewhere as well. But because it is my first time driving, I'm being just a little bit more trepidatious. I'm being a little more careful. So the train is fully in the platform. I can come to a stop anytime before the end of the platform at this stage. Since we're about halfway along, I'm going to assume this is where I want to be. So I'm going to open the doors right here. Arrival at BWI Airport, track number one. Cell number 2158, okay to go. Thank you. Leaving BWI Airport, our next and final stop is Baltimore Penn. Stopping at track number six today. We're about 11 miles away from Baltimore Penn. And now that we've got our train moving, I'm gonna go ahead and go to 100% throttle, get this thing purring. You can actually see, if I zoom in for a moment here and hide the HUD, you can actually see the uh, speed MPH going up there on the uh, screen to the right. So it does show you the, uh, if you want to drive without the HUD, this is the way you could do it because you actually have the MPH right there. You're not get, you're gonna have to guess where the hills and gradients are or have a good memory of it like a real train driver does. Uh, or you could just keep the HUD up and you know not screw up. There's that option too. my throttle now because I'm getting close to the 110 limit. You see right now that I am designated to be about 24 seconds early. That will change. One way or the other it will change. 
So I'm going to hang out at 107 for right now because I want to just make sure I know what we're dealing with here. 108, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put it to coast. I think we found our, um, I think we found that the uh, speed is increasing even with the throttle applied at this point. So that is happening at the 110 level. Whereas at 125, it's a good way to hold speed. At 10, when you're dealing with the 110, you're still gaining speed at level one throttle. So this is where the cruise control can come in exceptionally handy. We have a speed limit change coming up to 105. So I've gone ahead and returned to a coast setting and we might drop to the 105 in time. I'm not 100% sure on this. A little bit of lag on the route. I am not playing at high perform. I'm not playing at high performance. I'm playing more at a medium because I know about the lag uh, on my uh, system. This is Hawthorpe, Hailthorpe, by the way. Hailthorpe. I was going to call it Hawth Hawthorpe, but that's wrong. It's Hailthorpe. So I know that my system does lag uh, once in a while, but um, ooh, some a bunch of stuff just got disabled. What on earth? I do not like these alerts. <laughs> I do not like these alerts. What is going on here? I guess there are sections of the track where the signaling system um, does not work. You have to pay attention to any possible signal over your head, uh, which at the speeds we're going can be a little bit of a challenge, but that might be what it means. It might be the signaling system doesn't work in that section. And you have to actually pay attention to what's going on around you. You can't just look at the cab for a cheat sheet. You have to uh, actually pay attention. So we are going to be entering a 120, sorry, 110 section again right here. But we're going to have a 75 and a 70 right after that because we're coming within five miles of Baltimore Penn. And since we're going to probably go into a terminus platform here, I'm sure there are a termini platform, uh, we're probably going to have to uh, come to a very good stop in this area up here. I think we're going to pass by North Avenue on the Metro line as we make a turn into Baltimore Penn as well. Assuming that we're on the track I think we're on. Quick peek of the map while I start slowing down a little bit. Um, yeah, it's exactly where I thought we were. I'm exact, I'm, we are exactly where I thought we were. Which means that Halewood information was also correct. So there's a 70 and another 75. Our signals are starting to change to tell us we need to get ready to, uh, you know, pay attention. I don't know why I dropped below, down to 65. I have no reason to do that, but I did. I may have to look up these in-cab signals later because I just don't uh, have the uh, information right now. If I have the printout of that, I'll... Yeah, there's a the green. So we had to slow down for the 70. That was, again, probably another junction change or something like that. I wasn't didn't really notice. But it was something to do with that 70. So now that we're past it, we're back to green. But we're going to be stopped. We're going to be stopping soon anyway because we're... Three miles from Baltimore Penn. We're also coming up to a 75. The signaling system has changed again, probably to warn us about the 50. And we're going to get warned about the 30 in a moment. Oh, it's telling us about the, we have a 45 on the HUD. So I guess we're going to be slowing down to 45, apparently. Oh, yeah, because that's quite a few signal boards ahead. That is several boards ahead. But we do have a 30 to worry about as well. Heavy break. More break. More break. Thank you. So I'm down under 50 for now. I'm going to have to bring it down to 30 as well, but that's a slower speed. And I'm trying to, I'm going to try to gain that one just a little more. We're going to put a small brake on. We're about half a mile from the board, which is coming up very soon. Yeah, so small brake just to see what it does. We're down to 45 now in case the 45 limit does get applied. I was probably just talking about the board beyond the 55 and the 30 up ahead. There's another three beyond that. There's another train, by the way. I don't... Oh, that is actually a service. Pen line number 412 is hanging out here. Okay. We're going to get down to 30 in time, so I'm going to remove those brakes. We're going to see what happens here. I'm still losing speed, which is perfectly fine. I want to do that. Ah, good. This is perfect. So even though we're going to cross a 55 and then a 45 up ahead meaning our speed limit will be 45. Uh, by the way, our green was under a red. So uh, again, I'll tell you what that means later. I don't know. 
First time driving Amtrak. Don't shoot me. So we are into the 30 now for sure. But um, yeah, since the 30 is coming up right after the 45, I'm not going to try to uh, do any fancy schmancy stuff here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stay at 30. That seems to be the right play at this point. We are entering tunnels. The Gilmore Street tunnel is going to be the first one we're seeing here. So I'm going to assume that goes under Gilmore Street. Be a wonderful assumption there. Uptown Station on uh, a metro is nearby. Baltimore's Uptown Station is nearby as we come out of that and enter the next tunnel. We'll talk about that in a moment. So here, now we're back under the 30 and we're going to stay under the 30 now. Actually, this is just a bridge. It, lo it looks like a tunnel on the map, but it's just a bridge. So a little baby tunnel here. Now we're going to go into the real granddaddy tunnel. So the Gilmore Street Tunnel right here. We're going to be going downhill on this segment. So I'm going to keep a small brake applied for right now, get my speed down. I, Because I'm at a low speed, I don't want to go too far down. But I have to make sure I don't speed as well. So I have to be careful. We're on a 0.8% downhill gradient. I have to counteract that. You can see that the uh, lights in this tunnel are uh, modeled, which is very nice. Put that little brake back on because I'm starting to hit 30. So we're coming to the end of the Gilmore Street Tunnel. We are green, by the way, so we are clear to proceed. Proceed at line speed, which is 30 at this time. A left turn takes us out of this tunnel. You can see the next tunnel straight ahead. That's the Wilson Street Tunnel. Upton is now to our uh, left on the Metro line. Which may or may not be modeled. I don't know if it is. The Wilson Street Tunnel is the longer of the two tunnels, as you can see. Nine tenths of a mile away is the next signal. The brake didn't want to work for a second. Thank goodness I got that in time. That would have been bad. I can take a baby speeding penalty, but I don't want to. One point three percent downhill gradient. That is a uh, rather substantial downhill gradient, but the brake is working at this speed to bring my speed down. So it actually works nicely for my purpose. Oops, hit the wrong button for a second. This is why you react early. There's our stop up ahead. So uh, Baltimore Penn Station dead ahead. Well, not dead, but it's ahead. We have two signals to go before Baltimore Penn. So we should be getting some kind of yellow soon, I would imagine. There's a 15 beyond there, it looks like. So it looks like that might be a yard entry. Now, strangely, we have not left the uh, tunnel zone yet. So it looks like this might be a two-part tunnel with a little open air in the middle, which is interesting. Or no, this might be the John Street Tunnel. So it shows us one tunnel, but this is now the John Street Tunnel. So the hub does not properly indicate where the second tunnel begins or ends and the third tunnel begins. So yeah, that is the John Street Tunnel. There's the uh, burger for uh, the, you know, the cheeseburger you have to pick up when you're done driving a scenario. Go have your celebratory cheeseburger. Quick peek out the window here. Look at some of the lovely scenery going by. We're now under a yellow. It's telling us that the signal coming up is a yellow signal. 
or that we're under the yellow. Now we have a red coming up, so we definitely have to make sure we stop here. And that is our last stop. We're not doing the actual yard beyond, so the white lights mean that we're going to be shunting in the yard, but that's not something we're doing. That's something someone else is doing or something along those lines. I assume that's what that means. If those gray lights weren't there, that would be a definitive stop at the end of the platform. Without question. We also have to stop by 9.33.30. I'm coming in a little slower than I should have, but I should still be able to make it on time. I kind of wanted to see what the signal at the end of the platform said. Just to verify that it was indeed a red signal. It looks like it's a shunt signal. Which is okay. We're going to stop right here because I should have enough time to slow down now. Now we'll open the doors and I'll be the end of the scenario. We should have our nice easy first scenario done here. Let's take a look at the train. So here we are taking a look from track number six and joining track number seven. And uh, yeah, that's exactly where we stopped. So uh, that's a very simple first scenario. I'm curious to see because we don't seem to have a lot of places we can stop on this route. I'll be curious to see what the other scenarios do to make the uh, journey more interesting as you go. Uh, it seems kind of almost like a bit of a letdown. There's not that many uh, stations on this route. I kind of wish there were a few more stations along the route, like go around the capital, go down past, you know, the Pentagon or something like that, go a little further beyond Baltimore. But I think the area beyond Baltimore, Hoboken or something like that, is already on the North Jersey coastline. So I guess we can't really do much beyond that without encroaching onto another route. So what can you do? Um, in any case, yeah, that was our first scenario. And did I open the doors? Please tell me I opened the doors. I was, I was doing, yeah, I was, I was doing it. Okay. There you go. Excellent work. Another engineer will take over from here. I panicked for a moment because that was taking way too long, but that happens from time to time and uh, we're done and yeah, another engineer will take over. That's all we need to know. Let's uh, go to the scoring screen. And we accomplished the first achievement. Pretty simple one, actually. WB Simple Days. You're saying that was simple? Well, actually, it was simple, but we won't talk about that. In any case, uh, yeah, that's one down, five to go. So I'll see you next time for the next uh, scenario on the Washington Baltimore route. Uh, these seem to be some very, very quick drive scenarios. They're all less than hours. So, yeah, the advantage of a short route is that the scenarios are going to be short, uh, but there's a little bit less to explore. Oh, well. Uh, kind of goes with the territory, I guess. And it's also a very fast route, which also makes it go by very quickly as well. The fact it's a fast route. And I miss the stations. We're going to have to find them on the next drive. Wish me luck on that. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you, your part of the world. I will see you next time for more Train Simulator Classic. Uh, if the next video is out, you will see it on a playlist that will be emerging at some point here. It's not created yet as I'm doing this, obviously, because it's the first one. But the playlist will emerge at some point, and you will see the second video behind it on this playlist. In which case, you'll see that in a moment. So I'll see you next time. That next video starts in 3, 2, 1.